This is the rest of the Chapter 7 review. Jane's traveling to Europe this summer with the French club, and she plans to bring $300 to spend while she's there. If $90 in U.S. currency is equivalent to 63 euros, that means we have a ratio of dollars to euros, which would be $90 is worth 63 euros. Helpful to label sometimes. We're going to set up a proportion, and since she's bringing $300, it's asking how many euros she's going to have um, will she get when she exchanges her money when she gets to Europe. So we're going to put $300 because it's dollars on top. We need things to be in the same position. And then we'll put X euros on the bottom. So we'll cross multiply and get 90 times X equals 300 times 63. So we can 300 times 63 gives me 18,900. Divide that by 90, and she's going to get 210 euros. So Jane's going to have 210 euros. 35 says find x and y by showing all work round to the nearest tenth. You're tempted to just write a proportion because we've been comparing um, that with that side splitter theorem that 3x plus 11 would be to 4y minus 7 is 5x minus 8 is 2y minus 1. But that's not how you need to do this problem. We need to pay attention to the fact that this thing right here is actually a mid-segment. And it's cut this side in half. So we want to do 5x minus 8 is equal to 3x plus 11. And the other equation we want to do is 4y minus 7 is equal to 2y minus 1. Now, these, of course, can be flopped. I just did it so the larger amount of x or y was on the left-hand side. So 2 times x minus 8 is 11. We would add 8. 2 times x equals 19. We would divide then by 2, and x would be 9.5. For the next one, we'd subtract 2y from both sides. We'd have 2y minus 7 is negative 1. We would next add 7 to both sides. We'd have 2 times y is 6. We divide by 2 and have y is 3. On number 36, I find x and y by showing all work. Similar situation if uh, we have three or more parallel lines cut by two transversals, then the, or more transversals, the cut parts they cut off are proportional on those transversals. So if these two are equal, meaning 21x is equal to 5x plus 8, then this side is also equal in measure. So we've got those two pieces would be equal. So 20y minus 2 equals 17y plus 3. So those are our two equations to solve. So I'm going to subtract 5x on the first one. Gives me 16 times x equals 5x. I just made a boo-boo. It should be 8. Okay, I got rid of the 5x. And then divide by 16. Now, a lot of kids will automatically write 2 because they don't want it to be a fraction. 8 divided by 16 is not 2. It's either 1 half or 0.5. Subtract 17y from both sides to solve the other equation. That will leave us with 3y minus 2 is 3. We'll add 2 to both sides. And then we'll have 3 times y is 5. And then we'll divide by 3 and have 5 thirds. Or if you wrote a decimal, that's going to be 1.6 repeating. And to the nearest tenth, 1.7. On 37, it says triangle ABC is similar to triangle LMN. A to C is 16. I'm just going to start labeling stuff. B to C is 10. L to N is 12. And L to M is 8. What is the scale factor of LMN to ABC? Now, it's telling you which order to go. That matters. It has to start with LMN. Now, I'm not sure about these sides being proportional, so I need to compare the ones I know for sure are because in the statement, A to C, L to N are corresponding. 
So I don't want to do 16 over 12 because it says LMN first. So I have to do 12 over 16. 12 over 16 then reduces by division of 4 top and bottom. There's a common factor of 4 to the numerator and denominator. So dividing by 4 gives us 3 fourths. That is the answer. That is your scale factor. A reduced ratio of two sides. 38. In the book Alice's Wonder Event, Adventures to, in Wonderland, Alice's size changes from her normal height of about 50 inches. And suppose she came across a door that was only 15 inches high and that her height changed to 10 inches. What is the ratio of the height of the door? Door height first. Door was 15 inches in Wonderland. And her height went to 10. So it would be 15 to 10. Reduced is 3 to 2. How tall would the door have been in Alice's normal world? Well, if the actual door was 15 to, and the ratio of her height to it was 15 to 10 in Wonderland, in the real world, it says that Alice's height is 50 inches. Now, Alice's height changed to 10, so we'd need to put 50 on the bottom because that's Alice. This is in Wonderland. We want to know how tall, um, it says how tall would the door have been in Alice's normal world and that would be well make sure I did this right her normal height of about fit this is her Alice's height this is her height in the normal world um, I labeled this incorrectly this would be not Wonderland but that's the door I want to label it door to I don't know what maybe do that Wonderland but anyway door to Alice's height Door to height, door to height. So I'm going to put an X here, the door in the real world, because this whole fraction is about in the real world. And this was Alice's height. Keep messing with my labels here. Okay, cross, multiply, and divide. We have going to have 10 times X equals 15 times 50, which would be 750. And then dividing by 10, we'll have 75 feet. Uh, not feet, inches. Oh my gosh, I was just really blowing that one, wasn't I? Well, we all make mistakes. Oops, this is the correct answer. 39, this is a uh, question, has some typos in it. We got a four and a half foot man that casts a three foot shadow. Now shadows are on the ground. He's only four and a half feet tall and his shadow is three feet. It says, at the same time that a building casts a shadow of 10 feet. Now, the shadow of the building is all the way from here to here. And then it's going to, we want to find the height, of, not of the tree, of the building. So that would be X on there. So if you think of this as one big triangle versus one small triangle, and I know I'm not drawing these to scale because this I've made shorter than that on my picture. But regardless, we're talking about similar triangles. And because we want to assume that we stand up straight, there's a right angle and buildings are built perpendicular to the ground, then this would be a right angle. Find the height of the building and show your calculations. So for part A, we're going to do X. We can do x is to 4.5 as 10 is to 3. Or if you saw it as x over 10 equals 4.5 over 3, you'd still get the same answer. Because we do our cross products, 3 times x is equal to 45. We would divide both sides by 3 and get 15. So that tells me that the uh, building was 15 feet tall. Part B says find the distance the student is standing from the tree. Well, if there's shadows three feet here and the whole thing's ten there, this would be, and it's not a tree, it's supposed to be the building. I guess we could have drawn a tree instead of a building. I don't know what happened there. It's a type, typographical error or something. Um, so that would be seven feet. Oops, I forgot part C of that lovely question. Which theorem proves the triangles are similar? Uh, because we have two sides that are similar, this would be by side, angle, side, 
similar because we know about the right angle. So we had two sets of sides and an angle. Two sets of proportional sides and an angle between them. So SAS similar. Okay, the next one here, we're going to need to measure from Lawton to normal with a ruler, and we're going to use inches. Lawton to, oh, not normal, Norman. I don't know, it's almost thinking about Illinois, I guess. Uh, measuring that on your piece of paper, which uh, you, you need to use the inches side, I'm going to measure that right now on my paper. You would need to do it on yours. And I don't have a tool for that right now. And it would be between, it's actually right smack between 13 sixteenths and 14 sixteenths. I get a pen here. So I would take either of those on the test. What we practiced doing was we say 1.5 inches is 100 miles because that's the scale. You have to pay attention to the scale on the map. And then we wrote a proportion and we put what our measurement was into decimal form. So if we did 13 divided by 16, that is the decimal 0.8125. And then we'd find how many miles by doing a cross products. Now, if you did measure and get 14 sixteenths, which I would be very fine with since it is kind of ambiguous because the dot's so big and it's in between. Oops. That would have been 0.875. And your answer would be slightly different. Cross products are equal 100 times my 0.8125. Okay. And then I would need to divide that by 1.5. So I would have gotten 54.2 miles. If I use the 13 sixteenths, if you use the 14 sixteenths, then you would have had, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's see, 100 times 0.875, oops, and you would divide that by 1.5. You can type this all at once if you like. Cross products 58.3. So I would have given credit for either of these. Even though they are considerably different in the end, uh, our, but it was between on our ruler. Okay, again here I give a little bit of leeway as well from Ardmore to Shawnee. I'm going to draw a little segment where you should be measuring turned out to be a ray. When I measured that on my paper, putting zero at Ardmore and then measuring to Shawnee, I get 1.1 1 .1 and 2 sixteenths. I don't think that was very ambiguous at all. 1 and 2 sixteenths can be converted to 1 and an eighth. That's just the reduced form. And then we would convert that into a decimal. One plus two divided by 16 is 1.125. Okay, 1.125 is to X miles as the scale. 1.5 inches is to 100 miles. Cross, multiply, and divide. So we got 1.5. X is equal to 112.5, and then we will divide. Right. Divided by 1.5. Anyway, the answer should, uh, I typed something goofy. You must have double, I did, double decimals. They don't like that. 
112.5 divided by 1.5. 75 miles. Okay, then this question, we've got a billboard at ground level that has a support length of 40 feet that is labeled on the diagram. And it extends from the top of the billboard to the ground. A post that is seven feet tall, that would be seven, is attached to the ground. Seven feet tall is five feet from where the base of the support is attached to the ground. So this would be five feet. In the figure shown, um, okay, in the feet, let's see, the, from the base of the billboard to the base of the support is labeled X. So we need to maybe find that. It says to create an equation you can use to determine X. Hmm. Discuss any assumptions. Okay, we're going to assume that the billboard's standing perpendicular to the ground and that we have, we're going to assume we have two similar right triangles. Okay, so yeah, we're assuming, of course, these are perpendicular to the ground. That would make them right triangles. So we would use the Pythagorean theorem, okay, to find the missing side or the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle. Okay, so I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. 7 squared plus 5 squared equals, I'll just call this y, where I'm trying to find y squared. And I need to find it because i got to compare it to the 40. So that's 49 plus 25 equals y squared. That's 74 equals y squared. And then we take the square root. So square root of 74 is the length of y. And now I'm going to set up a proportion that compares this, which is 40, to the square root of 74. And there's other ways to write this. As x, that long side there, is to the 5 down here. Okay. Now, the 40 came off the large triangle. The seven, square root of 74 came off the small. The x came off the large triangle. The 5 came off the small and they correspond. So we cross multiply square root of 74 times x is equal to 200. And you can just type divide by square root of 74, 200 divided by the square root of 74. So I'm going to move this down a little bit and type that on my calculator. 200 divided by the square root of 74. It really wouldn't have mattered if you had written down 8.6 for the square root of 74 and used it. You'd still get your 23.2. And that would be in feet. This was number 42. It says 23.25 feet in the back um, on the answer key, and that's probably because I did I not round? Let's see, 23.49. That would actually be 23.24 point blah, blah, to the nearest hundredth, 23.25. If I left the decimal um, out to two places. And if you rounded the square to 74 to 8.6, then you would have gotten that 23.25. All right, and this is, again, the answers that you should be checking and working through the problems on your own. Okay, going to uh, good luck tomorrow on the test. We will be taking our test tomorrow.